speaking from the book of John, uh, when Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift of God, if you only knew, if you only understood who it is that had spoke, that was speaking to you, give me uh, to drink, you would have asked of him and you would have, he would have given the living waters. My subject is uh, make your move, make your move. It is your move. Jesus made the first move and it is time for us now uh, to make our move. And in order for us, as we think about this theme and greetings to everyone, you know, uh, all of our guests, our visitors, greetings, um, and all the old timers, as, as Sister, <laughs> Sister Elsa said, everybody who is here on an ongoing basis, uh, we love you. Um, in order to make a move, it is important for us to have options as to what move we're going to make, right? And how we're going to make those move, moves. Um, obviously, one of the options that we have is to do nothing, right? We can just simply do nothing, and that is an option. And, and you will find that there are some people who actually take that option. They'll say, I'm not going to do anything. Uh, but you'll find that those who take that option, they generally don't uh, accomplish anything. They don't amount to anything. They don't achieve anything. And for those of us who want to get somewhere, those of us who want to get something, those of us who want to better ourselves, those of us who want to continuously improve, uh, we know that doing nothing is an option, but for us, it really is no option. I want to have options because when I have options, I have choices. And when I have choices, it's an opportunity. It represents opportunity uh, in front of me. I can decide uh, what I want to do. They gave, um, they gave, they did a, a test with humans, with uh, animals like mammals, and then some birds. And they gave uh, each uh, group uh, the choice. You could get to what you wanted to get to. You want something, you like it, you see it, and you want to have it. And they said, okay, there are two ways you can get to it. You can get to it, but I'm going to decide the way that you're going to go. You have no choice in the matter, but you will get what you want. And then there's another option where you get to get what you want still, but you can go on different paths and you determine the paths that you are going to take. And in 100% of the cases for humans, for animals, and for birds, they always chose the option where they can choose and decide what path they're going to take. And what that says to us is that God has created us as people who like options and who like to decide. I, I like to have my options because, for example, I like to know that I can choose what I want to eat in the morning right? Or whenever I have meal time, I can decide. I, I can choose what I want to wear. And some of us, maybe when we're getting ready to get dressed, we stand in the closet or wherever we get dressed, we look at our clothes for 30 minutes, for 15 minutes. And at the end of it, we get up and we say, I don't know what to wear. I don't have anything to wear. And the problem is not that you don't have anything to wear, is that you have too many choices. You have too much options. But it's good to have options. I'd rather not know which one of my options to take than to not have any options. I wonder if you're hearing me. I'd rather I know Amen. that I have something that I can eat. I can choose what I want to eat than not have anything to eat. i rather to have uh, the job offers and not knowing which one yet I should take than not have a job at all. And so God will work to give us options because he says when you have options, you have opportunity. When you have opportunity, you have power. God will always give Amen. us options. Watch this. The Bible tells me that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, the first a recorded account or collection, recollection of when God gave man an option and a choice. And this is when God says, I'm going to empower you. He brought the animals that he created. He formed every beast of the, of the field, every fowl of the air. And God said, I created them, but here is how much I regard you. I'm going to give you the opportunity or the option for you to name them. And you decide whatever you want to call it, you can call it because I'm giving you an option. God says in this life, you're going to have opportunities 
and you're going to have options and you're going to be empowered to decide in your life. But God gets a little bit, uh, a little bit um, uh, different with it. He said, be careful when you are choosing. You have a lot of things that you can choose, but I want you to be mindful of what you're choosing. He says, look now, in this life, there are different options. And he says, I want you to know that there is a good option. Watch this. And there is a bad option. He says, look, I have set before you this day a good and life and death and evil. And so you have a lot of opportunities, but you need to be mindful of what you're choosing. Are you with me so far? Amen. Amen. I'm coming. So what then we need to realize Amen. is, number one, we have options, right? We have choices. But what good is a choice if we don't know which choice we're going to make? So God says, okay, I'm going to deal with you like that. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. I'm going to show you. And the Bible presents to us the fact that we have options. But the Bible also presents to us the fact that God always guides us and steers us along the right path. Deuteronomy, the latter part of verse uh, 19, he says, listen, I, I'm calling heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have already set before your life. I've given you these choices in life. Okay. The major categories of choices, life and death. Every choice that you make either comes down to life or death. He says it's either a blessing and a cursing. He says, listen, I'm going to help you. I'm going to choose. I'm going to help you to choose. I'm going to guide you as to how you should choose. He says, therefore, choose life that you and your seed may live. The Bible tells us here that God says, listen, I'm giving you the choice the choice is yours. I'm empowered to make a choice, but I want you to make sure that even though you can make any choice, not every choice is the right choice. So God says, I'm going to guide you. Here is the issue. When God gives us options and choices, God is not uh, going to um, interfere that way in our life. He says, I'm not going to mess with your choices because I've given you free will. But if you ask me what choice you should make, if you ask for my direction, if you ask for my instructions, if you ask me to guide you and direct you, that's when I'll step into your life. Number yes. three. So number one, he gives me a choice. Number two, he says, listen, uh, there are different choices and the different choices lead to different things. Therefore, I'm going to guide you. Number three, he says, I'm not going to step into your life. I'm not going to stop you out. But if you come unto me and ask me for my direction, ask me for my instructions. Are you with me? Ask yeah. me for Amen. where I should go. Yes. Then I, should, yes. I will guide you. That's what the Bible says. That's why uh, Solomon, the wise man, he came in and he said, listen, I'm going to help you. I'm going to tell you how God can help you. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes. And don't yes. lean onto yes. your own understanding. Okay? Yes. But in everything that you're doing, make sure that you put God first. Can I, can I say it? Amen. Amen. Put Amen. God first. Put Amen. him first. Jesus. And then he's going to direct you. We can't just decide I'm going to do something and then say, God, bless what I'm doing. That's not how God works. God says, if you My ask God. me, if you look to me, if you seek me, if you come to me and say, God, I, I have this degree, but you know sometimes God I, I just can't figure this thing out who am I talking to yeah. if you come to God and you say God I, I, know I have a lot of experience in life but right now I'm asking you to help me because I don't know which way to go I know what I see right now but I know you hold the future you hold tomorrow you hold it all and when I put my trust in you I will never be ashamed the Bible says Amen. Amen. With your Praise trust God. in the Praise Lord, God. with everything, all of your heart, don't lean to anything in your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path right throughout the scripture. We see instructions, we see examples, we see men and women, a great men. And I love when the great men, the great ones come before God and, and they said, God, I, 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 God, I, I, I'm the king. God, I, I have counselors. God, I have wise men. God, I have lots of people. I have lots of staff. I have lots of army, military men. I have military might. 
I rule. I say, go and one goes. I say, come and one comes. But God, I'm not going to trust in what I have. I'm going to trust in you. That's why David said, some trust in chariots. Hello, some trust in horses. But we shall remember the name, remember of, the the name of, of the Lord our God. And what I like about it, Sister Lisa, is David was not just saying that in his word or uh, uh, just uh, uh, just giving lip service to that when the push came to shove, David would always go before the Lord and say, Lord, what shall I do in this situation? You remember when David was at Ziklag. You all remember when David was at Ziklag and he had gone out to war and he had defeated uh, enemies when he had gone out to war. But when he had come back, there was a fight that was happening in his house that he had no idea about. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Be very Listen to me very carefully because sometimes you are fighting a battle in the ring, but there is also a battle that you don't know that's going on in the corner of your camp. Are you hearing what Amen. I'm saying? Amen. 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 Sometimes you're out doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, sometimes you're out fighting the battles that you're supposed to be fighting. Sometimes your mind is focused on your instructions that you're supposed to be carried out and you don't know that there is a fight in your right there in your house right under your nose as they would say in Caribbean culture David went it's out hallelujah. to fight Ziklag, and there was Amen. a battle that he was fighting he was doing what he was supposed to be doing and there was a fight that was happening in his hometown a fight in the camp and when he returned with all of the military man the whole a camp was destroyed it was burnt down the women were gone, the children were gone, everything was lost and to make matters worse, the very men that had gone out to fight with him, they had turned on David and start to quarrel and start to curse him and telling him that this is his fault what do you do in a situation when you're focused, you're doing what God says you're supposed to be doing yeah. but you're facing a fight not just at the battlefield y'all not hearing what I'm saying yes, to you yes. you're facing a my fight God, also my at and I heard David when the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord and David said God what shall I do in this situation you're not hearing what I'm saying Amen. to you. Should I go Amen. after them? Should I pursue them? And the Bible said, God said, oh, David, you're a man of war, but I thank you. I, I, I honor you that you came before me. I, I honor you that you ask me first. I honor you that you seek me first. You're not hearing me. Amen. And because you seek me first, you shall pursue them. You shall overtake Amen. them. Lord, help me. Somebody's getting ready to pursue this morning. And you shall yeah. recover it all because you sought the Lord. Lord. God will direct yeah. your yeah. Amen. Wasn't that what Amen. Jehoshaphat yeah. did? I'm coming. I, I have to hurry up. My brother Chris, wasn't that what Jehoshaphat did when Jehoshaphat was there and the armies encircled them and the armies rose up against them and Jehoshaphat got before the Lord and he said, God, we don't know what to do but our eyes y'all not helping me our eyes are on you and God said uh, uh, stand still y'all not hearing what Amen. I'm saying to you. and see the salvation of the Lord be still and know that I'm God uh, because you sought me this enemy that is fighting you this battle that is before you it doesn't belong to you who am I talking to this morning yes, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm talking to somebody who has been seeking God. I, I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody who has been looking to God. I'm talking to somebody who has been praying to God. Somebody has been on their knees before God in the nighttime. But I'm here to tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus that God says, because you sought me, stand still. This one is not your fight. This Amen. battle belongs to me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Uh, 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 God says, I will direct your part. He says, uh, part, I, I'll direct your, I'll instruct you, I'll show you which way to go. Jehoshaphat said, oh God, will you, will you not judge them for we have no might against this company and, come, and th that comes against us. I don't know what to do, God, but my eyes are on you, God. I need you to show me which way I should go. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? Amen. Yes. Amen.
So no matter what the issue is, no matter what the problem is, no matter what the situation is, you just need to look at God and say, God, I, I, I trust you in this situation. I know you will direct me. I don't know how it's going to go, but I know you're going to direct me. I don't know how I'm coming out of this, but I know you're going to direct me. Y'all not hearing yes, what yes, I'm saying? Yes, I, I, don't yes. know, I don't know how the future is going to work out. Glory mm -hmm. to God. But I know my future is going to work out well. And when you start talking to God like that, when you start putting your trust like that mm -hmm. a confidence comes upon you, confidence yes. comes around you, and yes. God starts to encourage you and empower you. And you still might not know how things are going to work out, but you step into your tomorrow. Hello, somebody. Amen. You, step Amen. Into your future. Amen. you step into your destiny and you step into it with confidence, not knowing how, but just knowing that somehow. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying yes. to you. Amen. Not knowing oh, when, man. but just knowing that sometime, not man. knowing how it's going to work out. But but trusting in God and knowing that God is going to direct my path because I trusted in him with my options. When you start to trust God, God will give you even instructions that don't make any sense. He will say to you, cast thy net. He said, cast thy net into the deep. And, and you'll come to him and say, God, but we've been fishing all night. I wish I could talk to somebody. Oh, yes. I, I could come to yes. him and say, God, I've, I've been fishing all night. We have caught nothing, God. Nothing. And Jesus will say, just cast your net. Just launch out into the deep. Who am I talking to? Lord, oh, help yes. And cast yeah. your head. And, 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 and he will say, and, and, and you just need to say, not at my word, God, but at thy word. Preach, Pastor Gordon. <laughs> thy word, will be God. And, and you just cast your net. You've been doing it a long time, but, but at the direction of God, you've, you've been, you, it feels like you've been wasting time, but at the instructions of God, it feels like you're going nowhere. You're getting nowhere. It seems like you've been pushing against a rock, but, but, but Jesus says, cast thy net, and it's not the rock in front of you. It's not even the casting of the net. It's the uh, obedience to the word of God. And when, when you cast your net at the obedience of the word of God, a real yeah. God, a real catch, a great draw of uh, fish is coming because you are obeying the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Look at Sarah, you look at Sarah, you look like Sarah, you sound like Sarah, your situation mm -hmm. is like Sarah. You've been there all you've been there all your life. You're now 90. It ceases, preach pastor, to be with you according uh, 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 according to the women. It, it ceases to be with you. You can't have children anymore. Your 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 old man, he has no pleasure uh, as uh, as Sarah would say, but 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 because God says at uh, this time next year, Y'all not hearing what yes, I'm saying. Yes, yes. Oh my God. Because God says you're going to have a baby, God says, I'm going to make you laugh. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Yes, yes. 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 Amen. And so I may not have the choices or the options. I may not know what to do, but I'm trusting God with my next step. I'm trusting God with my next step. Let's move. I, I'm trusting God with my tomorrow. I'm trusting God with my future. I'm trusting God with the kids. Hello. Oh, God. I'm trusting God in the marriage. Yes, Lord. I'm trusting yes. God in the job. Preach, Pastor. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trusting God with the money, with the finances. I'm, I'm trusting God with the rent. I'm trusting God with, with the house, with the place that I should live. I'm mm -hmm. trusting God. God with the with the landlord. The landlord is acting crazy, but but I'm trusting God. I'm talking to you this morning. I'm I'm yes. trusting God with what I should write. I'm I'm trusting God with the doctor. I'm trusting God. I, I don't know. I'm trusting God. God, I'm gonna trust you because they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Mount Zion. Amen. Yeah. I'm trusting God. God. God wants you to trust him because he, he'll always give you an option. Praise Pastor Gordon. He'll always give you an open door. He'll, he'll never leave you out of options. See what the enemy wants. I'm hurrying up. What the enemy wants is the enemy wants you to make decisions and to make choices that will always restrict mm -hmm. your options. He'll always yeah. restrict 
op options, your outlook, your opportunity. He's trying to get you to do something. He's trying to get you to think on yourself. He's trying to get you to lean on your own understanding. Hallelujah. He's trying to get you to think about it. He's trying to get you to reason it out. He's, he's trying to get you to use what the experts alone are saying. And, and God is saying, don't just look at what you see. Lord, help me. Don't just look at what you read. I, I want you to listen to my voice. And, and sometimes you just need to go, come to God and say, I don't understand it, God, but, but because you said it, I'm going to obey it. I, I don't care what the enemy Hallelujah. says. Amen. I don't care what the world Amen. says. I don't Hallelujah. care what going through right now. I, I'm going to trust in you because if I trust in you, I'll never be out of options. Can I tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, if Adam and Eve had just listened to the voice of God, none of us would ever have a situation where we're out of options, but the enemy knows how to trick yes. you and to trap yes. you. Can I, can I say that again? The enemy's plan is not just to trick you, uh, but to trap you at a dead end. Preach, Pastor. Yes. Who yes. am I talking to? The oh, enemy's yes. plan Hallelujah. is to trick you and to trap you, <laughs> to put you in a corner and to leave you out of options. Mm -hmm. uh, if Adam and Eve had only listened to God, had only obeyed God, had only said, devil, I don't care what you say. God said, this. Lord, help me. God uh, said it. I believe it. And I'm trusting in God. But I thank God that I have two or three people. Y'all not with me. Amen. Oh, God, I even believe in God that five or ten. I'm even believing God that every person on the line can look at your situation and say yes. to yourself, I don't care what it looks like, devil. I am not going against the voice of God. Amen. 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 Amen.
No, yes. no, they're out of options. They're out of options, mom. They're out of options because they did what God said not to do. And, and instead of coming back to God, they start to covering up. They start to they yes. start to make fig leaves and they start to cover themselves. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when you start to cover themselves, it, it, it means that you're not you're not uh, looking for the covering from God anymore. Can I can I talk to you? You start to lose options. And, and when you start to cover yourself, you start to hide from God. And, and they start to hide Lord. from God. And God has to come in and God has to say, where are you? Who, who am I talking to? God, God has to come in and say, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? I'm looking for you, Adam. And Adam is saying, I'm hiding from you, God. I'm, I'm out of options, God. I'm, I'm running from you, God. I'm hiding. But you know something? Let me wrap this point up with a good news, with the gospel. You know something that I like about God? No matter how bad I find myself, no matter how much I missed it, I'm talking to you. No matter yes. how many mistakes I make, I always have a God who says, I'm looking for you. I'll see you all yes. later. No yes. matter how bad we make it for ourselves, yes. God says, I'm still looking for you. You're hiding with me. You're hiding Amen. from me. You're running from me, but I'm looking for looking. you. You're Amen. back up in a corner, but you ain't in no corner that is too dark for me. Y'all not hearing what I'm Amen. saying. Amen. I love it. How Amen. David said, where shall I go uh, from that Presence, presence, oh Lord, and whither shall I hide myself from thee? If I make my bed in hell, there you are. And if I take the wings of the morning, y'all are not hearing what I'm saying yes, to you. Yes, you cannot amen. outrun his goodness. Uh, preach, Pastor God, and you cannot yes. outrun his grace. Uh, you amen. cannot outrun in the goodness of God uh, and no matter where I find myself, uh, God is yes, always Lord. hunting. Woo! Amen. 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 God, I have to hurry up. God is always running after me. God is always looking for me. He's always trying to seek me. My God, uh, there is no river too wide uh, that he won't cross it. uh. There is no mountain too high. uh. Oh, God, that he won't mount it. uh. There is no ocean too deep uh, uh, for my God to reach me when I find myself in trouble. He says, Adam, uh, where are you? He says, Eve. Where are you? I heard you. I was naked. I was afraid, God. But I thank God you're not hearing what yes. I'm saying to you. Is there anybody out there who knows that God found you? Lord, help me. Amen. Amen. You were hiding, yes. When you were afraid, when you were nervous. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, yes. Everybody ought to be saying amen right there. Amen. You're not hearing to you. We ought ought to be saying amen because he found me. When I was lost, he found me. When I was one out of 99, God help me. He left the 90 and the 9 to find me. He went after me. Lord help me. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Have, Amen. Have, Lord. Here is Jesus. Here is Jesus. I'm getting to the, to the text. Here is Jesus. The Bible tells me uh, that Jesus comes into the text and he comes in John chapter 4. Thank you, uh, Holy Ghost. He comes in John uh, chapter 4 and he's seeking, uh, 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 he's going through through uh, Samaria. The Bible tells me that he must needs go through Samaria. He doesn't have to uh, go to Samaria, but he needs to go through Samaria. You missed it right there, but you will yes. get it in a little while. He doesn't have to go through uh, yes. go through it. He needs to go through it yes. uh, because yes. there is a woman out there uh, mm-hmm. who is out of options. I'm coming. Yes. I'm coming. Yes. Yes. There. there is a woman out there who is back I'm up in a corner. Uh, uh, preach the thing, Pastor Gordon, here is Jesus, and the Bible says uh, he could go another way, but he chooses to go through Samaria. Why does he go through Samaria, Pastor Gordon? Well, I'll get to that later, but the reason he goes through, but one of the things, a couple of things that happens uh, when he goes through Samaria, the Bible says, number one, he goes through some area where he doesn't have to go and and you hear what the woman says uh, the Jews and the Samaritans have no dealings okay yes. no relationship yes. with us you don't like me Lord help me and I don't like you you walk on the other side and I walk on the other mm-hmm. side you don't call me I don't call to you neither you avoid me I avoid you I know you are yes. sanctified but remember when you were not saved and you had some people that you don't like, uh, you <laughs> avoid them. Y'all not hearing? Yes, yes. 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 Avoid them because any interaction uh, can end up in a situation. Can, 
can I just say it like that? And you want to avoid any kind of potential uh, situation. So you avoid them, okay? He goes through Samaria, although every other Jew is avoiding Samaria. Lord, help me. Number two, uh, he goes into Samaria. He ain't got no food with him and he doesn't have any water. It means that he is in a precarious uh, situation because if he gets hungry or thirsty, uh, he doesn't have anybody who is friendly uh, with him who yeah. can help him and he yes. can stop at Mary and Martha's house. Are you hearing what uh, I'm yes, saying? Yes, ain't yes. no Mary and ain't no Martha. There is nobody here who likes a Jew uh, because they are Samaritans. Yes. Number three uh, and this is uh, this is interesting. Uh, he sends the only people who are friendly with him away. He, he says, yeah. get away. He says, go get me. Go into town. It's okay. I've got some food uh, that you know not of. I'll see you all later. Uh, yes. Jesus, then, uh, he's making some decisions. Uh, he's making some choices. Uh, he's choosing some options uh, that on the surface don't make any sense, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, but can I tell you something? Uh, when God sees that you are in a corner and he mm -hmm. wants to get you out of corner, yes. Lord help me. He will do anything, including uh, putting his own self in a corner to pull you out of that yeah. thing. I'll, I'll yeah. see you all later. Yeah. He yeah. goes in and he makes some decisions uh, that will paint himself into the corner uh, because God says you are in a corner and I'm coming down into the same corner to get you out of the hell that you find yourself in. Amen. 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 Yeah, the Bible says, Sister Sharon, that he gets there, Sister Sally, and he gets there. And here's what happened. When he gets there, he gets two things. He gets thirsty and he gets tired. Lord, help me. Have you ever been thirsty and tired? It's one thing when you're thirsty. It's another thing when you're tired and thirsty. I'll see you all later. Okay. It's one thing. You're tired, but it's another thing when you're tired and you're thirsty. It's one thing when you're thirsty and you're tired and you can lie down because you're almost home. You're all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Yeah, but it's not almost home. He is far from home. From home. And the man, mm -hmm. Jesus, look at my Jesus. God help me. He's thirsty and he's tired. Yes. I've ever been thirsty. I'm tired. I tell you something, being thirsty and tired is a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. and we don't understand it because we have, we have, uh, we have these bottles now, you know, they are insulated and you have your ice and, and, uh, and you have the coolers and you can go here and there and, and you have convenience stores and, and you have uh, uh, supermarkets everywhere now and, and you have, um, you know, you have the gas stations and, and you can get water. But, 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 but try being thirsty and tired in the desert where you don't even see a stream. You're all not hearing what I'm saying to you, but Jesus yes. thirsty First, and tired. I'm coming, I'm coming. Here is a, a little thing that I found, Dr. Gordon. What I found... Uh, Dr. Spencer, uh, is that there are certain conditions uh, that can make you thirsty and tired, okay? I realize that um, an anemia, if you're anemic, uh, you can be both thirsty and tired, and you're always thirsty and tired, uh, but Jesus is not anemic. Uh. Okay, number two, it could be a, a high blood calcium. It could be, if you have so much calcium in your blood, uh, it causes you to be always thirsty and tired, but he does not have a, a medical condition like that. Uh, number three, I heard, uh, I read that it could be diabetes. Uh, and when you're diabetic, you're always thirsty and tired, uh, but it was not anemia, it was not high blood calcium, uh, and it was not diabetes that made him thirsty and tired. Uh, it was a woman uh, who was in a corner and he was out of options. Uh, Y'all not hearing yeah. What yes, I yes, but yes. I heard the Bible when he, the songwriter when he said, uh, "All the way to Calvary, 
Felipe. He went yeah, for me. Yeah. He went yeah. for me. Yeah. He went for me all the way to Calvary. He went for me. And Jesus would put himself in a corner uh, so that he can get you out. Uh, he would paint Amen. himself in a situation uh, mm -hmm. so that he can meet you at your point of need. Uh, he can yeah. get to yes, where Lord. you are uh, so he can get you out of where you are uh, and where he needs you to be. Uh, Jesus has no problem, uh, but he makes himself have a problem uh, because whenever I have a need, uh, that is when Jesus has a need. Uh, you're not here what I'm Amen. Amen. The only reason he's going through Samaria is because there is a woman in problem. Uh, the only reason yes. Jesus yes. met yes. you is because you had a problem. Uh, you're oh, not yes. hearing what I'm yes. saying to you. God, uh, God is orchestrating situation so he can meet you on the job he can meet you at the home meet you at your house he can meet your niece and your never your nephew preach pastor gordon yes. your auntie and your uncle whatever the problem is uh, he's orchestrating it uh, to pull you out uh, he's thirsty Amen. and he's tired uh, yes. uh, so Lord. that you don't get tricked uh, and trapped. Uh, Lord, uh, help me. You're not hearing what I'm saying to yeah, you. But yeah, yes, the thing this afternoon, uh, he found himself in a corner when he doesn't need to be there uh, because you and I were there. Uh, and he's pulling us out of the corner. Amen. Amen. Here Amen. is the situation. The problem that we see, uh, the, the, the Dr. Victoria Gordon, the problem, Victoria, uh, that we don't see is that there are certain issues, uh, many of the issues that are around us in people, uh, we don't see them. I was struck. I had to talk to Sister Lisa uh, to, uh, this week, and I said, did you know that there are 70% of the disabilities, the disabilities that people struggle with are issues that people, nobody can tell. I, I did training, and, and on the training, there was a Man, he was talking fine. He looked fine. He sounded fine. But he said, you know something? I can't even hear right. Y'all not hearing oh, what I'm saying. Yes. If somebody yes. doesn't uh, interpret for me, if I don't have closed captions, if I don't have a, nobody would know that I have a problem. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Yes. She oh, said, I have, a, I have low visibility. And what that means is every day that I wake up, she says, uh, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to see uh, because I have this issue uh, where sometimes I see good and sometimes I can't see good. It just depends on the day. Now, if you look at some of these people, you have no problem. You have no idea the problem they are facing. Can I talk yes. to you? Yes. Uh, yes. You look at me and you said, you look good uh, you mm -hmm. dress up good uh, but mm -hmm. deep down on the inside i'm talking to myself uh, there is a problem, problem. that somebody is yes. going through yes. Uh, yes. jesus knows uh, when you're in a problem uh, jesus knows uh, when you're thirsty lord help me a pastor may not know but jesus, jesus knows, knows. Your disabilities, uh, Amen. your insecurities, uh, your frustrations, uh, the level of stress. Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, he knows. He knows. I feel this thing, man. I feel this thing. Uh, he God, knows. he knows what you're going through. He knows uh, what you're feeling. He knows what you can't tell, honey. Lord, help me. What you can't tell, babe. What you can't tell, baby. When you don't have nobody. When you can't tell your BFF. He knows when you can't even express it. God, help me. When you Amen. don't know. Jesus knows what you're going through. And I'm telling you, he's about to meet you at your corner. Ooh. Oh, Amen. Lord. Amen. 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 70% of the disabilities in the physical world mm -hmm. are not visible. Nobody can see and tell you. Unless you disclose it. Unless you disclose that there is an anxiety issue or a stress mm -hmm. issue. Unless you disclose that there is something going on. And some of us are good at acting. We're so good at acting uh, because we don't want nobody to know our business. I'll see you all mm -hmm. later. Yes. yes. So true. Yes. 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 Amen. We don't, know, we don't want so nobody to know 
what we're going through, Sister Sally. We don't want nobody to know uh, that there is hell. And we're so good. And praise the Lord. And I'm blessed this morning. And I'm highly uh, favored this morning. But can I just tell you something? God already knows uh, that you are in a 70% bracket. And and God knows, Lord help me, that you're crying out in the night. Uh, God knows that your soul is in pain. Uh, Oh, God knows what you're going through. And he sees it. And he's about to meet you at the corner. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And brother Chris, y'all not hearing. Y'all not hearing. Thank Thank just Lord. amen. I hurry up the thing. Y'all not helping me. Y'all supposed to know. Uh, by now. Yeah, y'all supposed to know. So Jesus comes in, and the Bible says he must needs go through Samaria, a place where in Matthew he told his disciples in Matthew. Now I told you that they don't have any dealings, and he told the disciples in Matthew that listen, listen, Matthew chapter 5, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Okay, do not talk to any Gentiles. Gentile right now, and I don't want you to go where the Samaritans are. Yeah, y'all need a minute to look at that and see that this was the same Jesus that told them, please don't go into Samaria. Here is Jesus, and the Bible says he needs to go through Samaria. Lord, help me. I'm getting happy already. Y'all are hearing what I'm saying to you. Now, now, here is what we always look at it, and, and we look at it, and we say, why uh, does God uh, say don't go into Samaria? But here is Jesus himself, and he himself is going into uh, Samaria, and we say God uh, is going against his very word, uh, and we preach it, and we teach it, and we say Jesus is doing something uh, that he said not to do, uh, uh, because he uh, he was, uh, he, 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 somebody was in need, uh, and he will go through the need, uh, and he will go even against his own mandate uh, to get somebody out of need. And that that is really, really good. And and that is really, really true. But but I want to show you even more uh, how much of a problem it is uh, that Jesus goes through Samaria. I want to show you that they hated each other so much. Watch this. And I'll show you why he tells them go, don't go through Samaria. In Luke 9, 51, are you seeing this? Nine, uh, sorry, yes, Luke 9, 51 to, to, to 56. They said, and it came to pass, I'm reading, when the time was come that he should be received of Sister Odia, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, and they did not receive him because Mm -hmm. his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Look at what the disciples did, James and John, the elect elect of the elect, uh, the ones who wrote part of the Gospels and uh, the New Testament, the one who Jesus took with him on the Mount Transfiguration, the ones who Jesus was with Jesus uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, the sons uh, of thunder, uh, James and John, they come to him uh, and said, Jesus, uh, do you want us to call fire down uh, and and, uh, command it from heaven uh, and to destroy them uh, even as Elias did? Can I can I talk to you a little bit? The reason Jesus said don't go into Samaria is because if Jesus allowed certain people into your life before he has a chance to get to you, they're going to destroy you. They're going to pull you down. Yeah. Amen. 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 Says, I can't allow any and anybody, y'all not hearing what I'm yes. saying, to yeah. mess with what I have covered, to mess with what I've called out, to mess with those who I have a plan and for oh, in their yes. life. Jesus Amen. says, you can't go in there until I go in there. I need to make my mark. I need to have, watch this, first mover advantage. No, first mover advantage is a business term. And in business, we say first mover advantage gives the incumbent, the very, very big person, an opportunity to move into a market and to make their mark. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Yes. yes, What what Jesus says is I'm using, I am the big guy here. I'm the big gun here. I I am God in this situation. And I'm going to move into a market. uh, And before anybody around me, y'all not hearing what yes. I'm saying. 
to you this morning can get to you before they can touch you even when they say they know me he says mm-hmm. i'm going to make sure that i have a mark on their life first amen amen, amen. amen. I'm getting into some area. I'm, I'm doing first mover advantage. Are you hearing yes. uh, what I'm saying to you this afternoon? And so he wouldn't, he wouldn't allow them to get into Samaria. <clears throat> and it's not just that he's going against his word. He says, don't go there because I, I need to make a mark. I need to lay a foundation. Mm-hmm. I need people to see Jesus first. Y'all not hearing yes, 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 yes. <laughs> But, but, but when I come to God, when I come to church, I, I, I love your pastor, but I want to see Jesus first. I see you all later. Amen. 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 Presence. Amen. Come into prayer meeting. When, when I come anywhere, I love you, but I want to see Jesus, Jesus. first. Yes, yes. I want his heart to be made on my life. You are not hearing what I'm saying yes. to you. Yes, yes. yes. <clears throat> he says, I need to have first mover advantage. I need to have a shake on the market. I need to have a stamp plate. Mm-hmm. I need to put my name there. I, I need to have my impact. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The miracle worker. I need to be yes. God in this place. I need to have uh, my mark made on this place. Are you hearing what I'm saying yeah. to you? Yes. 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 And so Jesus made the move when Jesus comes in. And, and, and so in John chapter four, what he's doing then is he's making his move. He's making the first move. He's, he's telling them, don't go into Samaria. And he's making a move. He's putting his move on. He's going there and he's sent, uh, going there without any water. And he's making a move. Mm-hmm. Not, not to hear what I'm saying to you. He's going there without any food and he's making Make a move. It. He's sending the disciples away and he's making a move. He's getting tired and thirsty and, and even hungry, but, but he's making a move. And, and here is what Jesus did. He sat on the well. Come here, somebody. He yes. sat there on the well and he's making a move and he sits on the well uh, until the woman comes by. Y'all not hearing yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Jesus will just sit on a situation. He'll just sit on a plane. Mm-hmm. He will just sit right there because he knows that I'm making the first move. Uh, and as soon as I make my move, here comes uh, this next person. Uh, and when you come into the situation, you will find that I made the first move. No, no, here's what I didn't say it with the first mover advantage because I, you know, I want to be clear. Sometimes here's here's the first mover ad- advantage. The first mover advantage is not always the, the incumbent, the big guy, doesn't always go into the market first in business. When you have first mover advantage, it's not always the big guy. Amazon didn't go into online business first. Yes. Watch this. Huh. They didn't go into online business first. But what the first mover says is that when I get into the market, I'm going to make the market. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Yes. What? yes. Mm-hmm. I, I, Apple didn't create the cell phone. Hmm. But, but when Apple, when, when Jobs went into the cell phone business, when, he create, when they created the cell phone, they said, you've been doing this a long time. Excuse me. I'm going to show you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Show you how you're supposed to do cell phone. I'm going to show you how you're supposed mm-hmm. to do a computer. Google was not the first one with a search engine. There was Alta Vista and there were all of these other cell, uh, 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 search engines that was out there. But you look at all of them now. Lord, I wonder if you're catching what I'm saying to you. Yes. You look at all of them right now and none of them are in existence. The first mover advantage doesn't mean that you're going to move first. First mover advantage means that when you step into a situation, you're going to make your mark. Here's yeah. what God says. Yes. God says, Lord, yeah, yeah, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Mm-hmm. God says, it's, it's not that the devil won't be able to mess with you. Because, because somebody is saying, Pastor, I didn't know God uh, until I was old. I, I made some mistake. It's not that you're not going to make some mistake. It's mm-hmm. not that the enemy won't be able to come in and, and do certain things. He's out there like a roaring lion. But what God says is that when I step in on the scene, y'all not hearing me. Yeah. When I- 
move into your life. When I come into your situation, you might have had five husbands. I'll see you all later. But when I come into your situation, I'm going to change everything. You might have had some mistakes. You might have had some messes. But when I move into your life, everything that was done in the past is going to be a thing of the past. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. 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 Jesus makes the past the past. Jesus makes yesterday yesterday. Jesus removes my sins are far away from me. As far Amen. as the east, hello somebody, Amen. is from the west. As far as the seas are, as far into the, sorry, into the seas of forgetfulness. As far as the seas. In the east is for us from the west that is how far when he comes into your life when he comes into my life that is how far he removes yes. my sins from me mm-hmm. are you hearing what i'm saying to you this morning Amen. Mm-hmm. so sister mark what happens is that <clears throat> first mover doesn't always move first but the first mover has the biggest move mm-hmm. <laughs> first mover always uh, disrupts. The first mover is a disruptor. The first mover is a shaker up, right? Blockbuster. But, but, but the first mover is like Netflix. They just come in and they just destroy everything. That, that's what God does in our lives. That's what Jesus comes in and he wants to do with, with, the, with, the, with the life of the lady here. And so he doesn't just, he doesn't just make the first move. He doesn't just move. What God says is that I'm going to do a removal. He comes in, he makes the move. It's a first move kind of move. And he says, I'm going to remove everything in your life that was a problem up on this point, up, up, up onto this point. Right. I like what he does. I like what he does because he comes in and you all know the story. I'm, I'm not exegeting the text. You all know the story. We've done it in, in uh, Bible studies already. This is not the type of message where we're going line by line. He, he comes in and he talks to the, to, the, to the lady and he starts to talk to them and he, and he it t- starts to talk to her and he, and he sits on the well and he stays there and the woman is coming and he starts to talk to her and he talks to her because he wants to show her that Jesus is a God who comes in and interrupts you even though men don't talk to women, even though Samaritans don't talk to Jews, he's coming in and he's talking to her because he wants you to know that Jesus will interrupt your life so that he can off the track that you're on. He's going to shake up your life. He might shake up your day. He might change things around Mm -hmm. in your day because he wants to show you that he's the God that will interrupt the messes. He will interrupt the mistakes. He will interrupt everything and shift things. He he comes in and he starts to ask her for water because he wants to show her that there is a water that is a living water. I like how he asks her water, not because he is thirsty, but because she is thirsty. And he wants to show her that there is a living water, that if you get this living water, you will never, ever thirst Thirst again. Jesus is a man. He sits on the well of Jacob because because there is a connection with the Samaritans, the kind of the kind of half Jews, the half breed, so to speak, because they have gone away from the original type of worship. They don't they don't worship the same way as the Jews. They they still kind of believe in God, but but they say you're not supposed to worship in the Jerusalem mountain. And, and Jesus says, I'm going nowhere else uh, but back to the well of Jacob because I am the God. you you're not hearing me. Of yes. Abraham. Yes. I'm the God of Isaac, and, and I am the God of, of Jacob, and, and he wants to show us that they that worship God, God, God is not in a mountain, God, God is not a, God is not just in a space. He, he wants to show us that God is a spirit. Y'all, y'all need Amen. to hear what I'm saying Amen. to you. And yes. that God is not in a building, God is not in a place, God is a spirit. spirit. You need to hear what I'm saying to you. God is not in a shake, and God is not just in a move, and God is not in our styles and God is not in CCM or or in gospel. God is a spirit. Uh, Preach pastor God. God is not in the guitar and God is not only in the piano. God is a spirit and he says I'm sitting on the world to show you that I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and if you're worshipping me, you've got to worship me as a spirit. You've got to come with our heart true. You've got to 
come with your heart pure. I don't care how you dress. I don't care your color. I don't care how long the dress is. I don't care if you have the shoes on. God said, make sure before you get dressed, your heart is ready. Y'all not hearing what I'm yes, saying? Yes. He said, you got to come in spirit, baby. You got to come with your heart render and not your garment God because man. God is a spirit. I'm sitting on the well, lady, until you realize how to worship God. Amen. To her. Amen. He goes through this. I'm, I'm not exegeting. He talks to her and he just tells her that, you know something, I, I'm going to ask you about your husband. He, you know, in those times, women wouldn't really talk to men and men wouldn't really talk to women like that because, you know, just the time and the nature of conversations and relations and the culture and the context, men wouldn't talk to women. But Jesus comes in and he says, I'm going to show you that I am the God who satisfies your young not hearing what yes. I'm saying to you. I'm going to show you that you had five men and none of them couldn't fulfill you. Good God Almighty, you have this man and that man and none of them couldn't fulfill what you need in your life right. because even the one that you have now, you don't even marry him because you say after five, my God, all of them fail, none of them work out. Now, this one I'm not even going to try, but Jesus says you don't need a man, you need the man. you not here what I'm saying is the man. Jesus is the man. You've tried all of these men, huh? but you're not looking for a man. Huh? You're looking for Jesus huh? and what man couldn't do for you. Lord, help me. Can I make it plain? Huh? What degrees can't do for you? What accomplishments can't do for you? What cars and houses huh? and land can't do for you? Jesus yes. says, I'm filling that void, baby. Lord, have mercy. What nobody else can do for you, he says, I'll do for you. Uh, God, you were thirsty and nothing could fill you. You yes. tried water and you're still thirsty. You tried red wine, preach pastor, and you're yes. still thirsty. You tried Bailey's, uh, you tried Jamaica white rum, uh, you tried Appleton, and you're still thirsty. Good God Almighty, you tried apple juice uh, and pineapple juice, uh, but Jesus satisfies. Uh, woo, Jesus, uh, the thirsty soul, uh, and he comes in and he talks to her about all of these things because he's showing her that listen I'm I'm going to remove some mindsets I'm going to remove some thinking I'm going to remove some ideologies I'm going to extract out of your certain beliefs are you hearing what I'm saying to you when when Jesus moves into my life he he extracts a thought a, a mindset a thinking a, a, he starts with the mind because the deliverance begins in the mind his his first move always comes uh, into the mind uh, that's that's why he says, uh, uh, come now, let us reason uh, uh, together. Although your sins uh, are red as scarlet, he says, oh, yes. let's reason. Uh, I'm going to make it as a white as snow. Uh, who am I talking to right now? There's yes, somebody Lord. out there. I'm talking to you. I need you to reason out and, and realize that you don't need anything else right now. What you need, God help me, in your life is to accept the Lord Jesus uh, and be saved. Uh, I'm talking to somebody. You don't need anything else. Jesus is sitting on your well. Come here. Jesus is sitting on Jacob's well. And yes. he's telling you, you don't need another a business deal. Uh, you don't need another uh, a promotion. Uh, you don't need this next thing to cry. Now is Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. You need Jesus in your life. That's what you need right now. You don't need to go read this. You don't need to finish that deck. You don't need to study more. You don't need to call a client. You need Jesus. Are you hearing me? Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. You need in your Amen. life. That's what you need. He's sitting on the well. He's orchestrating. You're not hearing me by chance. You're not here by accident or by mistake. You didn't log in by accident. You need Jesus. And Jesus is saying to you, I will remove these things. I'll take away the mess. I will take away the misses. I'll take away the mistakes. I will take away the corrupted thinking from your life. Come unto me. Amen. Amen. All ye that live and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right. He comes to the woman, he sits on the well, I'm coming, I'm coming, and he stays there and he says, listen, I'm going to change your mindset. 
I'm going to change things in your life. I'm going to shift things around. He's not the first mover chronologically, but he's the first mover spiritually and by impact. He has more impact than anything else. And so he moves in first, and when he moves in as a first mover, he says, I'm going to shift certain things. And if you will allow the Lord to shift things in your life, if you allow him in, let him in, let him in, let him shift things, let him change things around, let him move certain things in your life. Just come in and say, God, have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Have, have your way, Lord. Have, have your way. way. Praise have thy own way. Thank have you, Jesus. your way, Lord. Just come and you say, God, this is, I'm thine. You know, God, I, I've tried it. I can't do it anymore, God. Just, just do it. Just do it, Lord. I, I tried five men. That's what she said. I've tried five, and this one is not even mine. Praise God. Praise God. God is talking to somebody. I'm, I'm hurrying up. But God is talking to somebody. Saying, come, 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 come. You've been waiting too long. You've been trying everything that, you, that you've been trying. Aren't you tired? Glory to God. Who am I talking? Aren't you tired? You're tired. You're tired. You're doing this. You're doing that. You're tired. You're extending energy. You're extending effort. You're doing it. You're waking up. You're stressing out. Jesus says, come unto me. Praise God. Come to me and I will give you rest for your soul. For your thirst for soul. I will pour out water on the soul that is thirsty. I will give you rest. He speaks to, I, I encourage you, I'm, I, I'm encouraging you. If you hear his voice today, don't harden your heart. Don't walk away, don't turn away. Accept the Lord. Be saved. Praise God. Yes, to meet you. Yes. Lord, Lord. And he speaks to the lady, and he comes to the lady, and he says, I'm not going to be, I'm not always going to be first. And there are different situations. There are dealings with the Samaritans. There is history. All of these things happen. You raise in a family. You raise outside of the kingdom of God. You didn't even know that about Jesus. And all of these things happen. But Jesus says, that's fine. Things can happen. Don't worry. Don't worry about what has happened. He says, I'm going to fix it. I'm the first God. Yes. Or when it looks like you have a bad history and there's no coming back. Mm. God is larger than anything the enemy has done. He's larger than the enemy, anything that the enemy can do. Praise God. He says, I can remove it. I can reverse it. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, my God. Yeah. I can Amen. change it. I can Amen. change it. Amen. God bigger than the enemy. He says, I won't rush it. I'm not in any competition with hell. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is not in a competition with the devil. And sometimes we look at it and we say, God, help. The devil is after. The, the devil looks like he's winning. God says, I'm not in any race with the devil. God says, I'm God. And when I move, everything get reversed. Everything get changed. We worry God, about this. Mighty God, we serve. God the first mover. I will remove. Hallelujah. I will restore. I will restore everything. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to? Come to Jesus. He says, I will restore everything. I will change everything. I'll put it back the way it was intended to be. Are you hearing this afternoon? Praise God. Lord. And so he comes in and he, and he moves. He moves in our life. See, see, God is not afraid. So sometimes God, God will even allow the enemy to move so he can come in and show himself strong. Amen. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you allow certain things to happen so you can say, look, look at, look, 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 look. All, all right, Pharaoh, I'm going to allow you. I'm going to, I'm going to allow you. Okay. I'm going to allow you a small sliver of time. But, but remember that the victory that they're going to get over you is going to be, way, is going to be much more than yeah. anything they put you, that you, that you could put them through. Is there anybody out there, you've been through hell, and when you're going through hell, you had to cry out to God, but the victory, when the victory came, you said, look what God but has God done. Has done. done. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. You stop and you look yes. and you say, look what Amen. God, God has done. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Jesus, is there anybody, you, you know what I'm talking about? And you look around, sometimes you even look around you and you say, look <laughs> what the Lord has done. has done. Amen. Yes, yes. Miriam grabbed the tambourine, Sister Sharon, and she started beat yeah. the tambourine. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying mm -hmm. to you? Yes. Yes. Elizabeth grabbed the tambourine, and Elizabeth says, my 
soul. Woo. Yes, let's magnify. magnify the Lord. Y'all are doing it. Yes, yes. Amen. And my yes. spirit is praise his name. Hallelujah. Amen. You that was called barren, isn't that what he said? You that was called barren, Elizabeth. Yes. And, and Zechariah, you were burned, no children serving God. But, but when God bring you out of barrenness, you are not hearing yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Amen. And sometimes you know something, you just need to grab your praise. You just need to grab your shout. You just need to grab your hallelujah and say, look, look, look what the my soul does magnify. In fact, you have to take a minute just right now and just look around and say, look, 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 and just beat your this is my amen. shout. Yeah. This is my rejoice. This is mm. my amen. Look what God has done in my life. Praise amen. God. Amen. Amen. I'm coming. I'm coming, brother Chris. I'm coming. And so he comes here and he, he comes into the woman's life. He meets her there in Samaria. I'm not bringing you out. I'm, I'm coming in. I'm not taking you out to meet me. You don't need an appointment. I'm setting an appointment for you. Lord, help me. Thank yes. you, Holy God says, I'm going into your calendar and I'm scheduling it based on your, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you, based on what you plan to do. I'm going to meet you in Samaria. I know where you're going to be, lady. And he sets it up. And he meets her in Samaria and he comes in and he talks to her and he says, woman, I'm the living water. He says, oh, woman, yes. I will fill your cup. Lord, help me. Oh, yes. he, that's where we start to say, fill my cup, Lord. Woo. Lord I yes. lift it up, Lord. Come and cleanse this thirst in my soul. Y'all not helping me. Yes. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill me up, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill me up and make me whole. He comes in and he teaches her about true worship. He says, I am God is a spirit and you, you can't talk about mountains. You can't talk about here or there. You ain't gonna worship God in no mountain because God is a spirit and the time coming now is hello, where the true worshippers. Is there any true worshipper out there who knows that you gotta worship him uh, in spirit, in spirit and, uh, and in truth and he, and he comes yes. in and he tells her I'm, I'm going to satisfy you oh god nothing else can satisfy me i got a lot of things in my life but can i tell you something uh, they really don't satisfy they're just temporary it's good yeah. to have them i appreciate them i like them but uh, but i thank god that god will fulfill me y'all not hearing what i'm saying yeah, to you yeah, i yeah. thank god that he fulfills my need he fulfills me even when I'm alone, I'm not lonely. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying yes. to you this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because Jesus fills every space. He fills every void. Uh, and he brings things into my life that satisfy. Jesus satisfies uh, more than anything in my life. They tried cigarettes, but they keep chain smoking because cigarettes can't satisfy them. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yes. They're sitting around the bar uh, and they're drinking chain mm -hmm. drinking. Uh, but they keep drinking because they need to go back. Uh, some people try drugs and drugs will only hold you for a moment, right. but how many yes. people know that Jesus, y'all not, y'all not yes. helping me. Jesus yes. satisfies. Yes. Oh yes, he does. Yes. Amen. I'm coming. And so he comes in and he makes the first move. And the woman, the woman says, Oh my God. He says, Go call your husband. She says, I ain't got no husband. And mm -hmm. here is what I like about the woman. I'm almost done. Here's what I like about the woman. I'm getting happy again. Here's what the woman said. Uh, the woman said, Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. Y'all let you know what I'm saying yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. said, Sir, I realize that you are different from the y'all other men. Y'all, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. She said, sir, I've talked to a whole lot of men, but ain't no man like Jesus. Uh, come here, somebody. Mm -hmm. She said, sir, I've had five, me alone, uh, and there's another one, uh, but ain't nobody like Jesus. Uh, can I talk to you this afternoon? Uh, the woman said, uh, I realize that you have moved into my life, uh, and here is what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm going to go into the city, and I'm going to make my move, uh, because you have made your move 
move and the move that you have made has made an impact on my life in other yeah. words i can't keep yeah. this to myself yeah. i'm about to make my move i can't hold my mouth any longer i'm I'm about to make my move. I'll see you all later. You can't stop me anymore. I'm about to to make my move. I've been imprinted. I've been stamped on. And I'm going into the market. Here is what I love about the story. The Bible tells me that when she heard Jesus, the woman left the water pots. Lord, I'll see you all later. She said, I came for water, but I found living water. I was carrying water in pots uh, but this man has filled me uh, with living water are you hearing okay. what I'm saying to you Amen. Amen. and she ran into the town uh, and she said come see a man uh, here's what I love about the story Amen. I love this story because it was not a man preaching to a man. It was not a man. It was not a prophet. It was not an apostle. It was not a deacon. It was not Peter, James, or John. It was a woman who went out there and she said, come see a man. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Women don't preach to men, but here is Jesus. And he says, if you knew who was talking to you, she says, no, I know. I'm leaving my potter. I've got living water. I need to. St- I need to let everybody know that there is a man. Woo! Oh, I'm yes. making my move. There is a man. I'm making my move now. There is a man who moved in my life, and because he moved, I'm about to make my move. Amen. 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 <laughs> Woman left the pot. She left the pot. She run left the pot. She forget about the pot. You ever, you ever leave the pot on the stove yet? <clears throat> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Sister Mark, you ever leave the iron plug in yet? When you leave the iron yes. plug in, you run back. You say, my God, the house like a bundle. And you run back. <laughs> the woman leave the pot. She leave everything. And she said, forget about the pot. I found living. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 And she went to Sister Sharon and she started to talk to the men. She said, come here, come here, come here. I am not the man. I am just a messenger. I need you to come and see Jesus. Come and meet a man. Now, the reason the woman is talking is because Jesus has made an impression. His first move advantage has made a change yes. in her life. Can I tell you something? You can have Jesus come into your life and you keep quiet. In the same. No. You you cannot stay how you are. You cannot sit down. You can have mm-hmm. Jesus moving all up in your life and you don't mm-hmm. have nothing to say. Yeah, the devil is a liar. I'm gonna tell somebody about my Jesus. Yeah, y'all not hearing yes. what I'm saying to you. I yes. need to tell, I need to sh- that's why sometimes you have to sometimes you just feel like shouting and, and you don't even know you, nobody can hold you. You have to tell them, hold my mute. You stay right there. I need to shout unto my God. Woo. Amen. God. <clears throat> then mm. has this impact man and she goes and she says he's made his move here is my move I'm making my move can I tell you something can I tell you something it is time for us to make our move it is time for mm-hmm. us to move out Jesus has come in he has met us where we are he has done for us everything that he needs to do it is time for us to make a move hello somebody are you hearing yeah. what I'm into you yeah. this afternoon. Yeah. Jesus has done. He has met me at the well. He has shown me that he's living water. I've tasted and I'm seen that the Lord is good. Well, if you have tasted and you're seen uh, that the Lord is good, uh, it is time for you to make your move. Uh. What are you waiting on? Uh? you are not hearing what I'm saying yes. to you. I'm almost done. Uh, but God said I've already made the move. Uh. I've sent Jesus on your row. Uh. I've sent Jesus in your lane. Uh. I've sent Jesus on your job. Uh. I've sent Jesus in your home. Uh. It is time to make your move. Uh. I've cleansed you from sin. Uh. I've cleanse you from stain. It is time y'all not hearing me. Yeah. Oh, for you to yes. make the move. I've released you from the power of death hell. Y'all not hearing what I'm yes. saying to you. Yes. And the grave, it is time 
for you to make your move. He says, behold, I give you power above all the power of the enemy. You're not hearing me, but it is time to make your move. I've already told you that no weapon that is formed against, against you, good God Almighty, shall be able to prosper. What are you waiting on? Go out into the city. Go out into the highways. Go out into the byways and make your move. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. 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 Did Amen. God not give you the whole armor of God? Y'all not catching me. The helmet yes. of salvation is yours and it is mine. The breastplate of righteousness, the shield yes. of faith, the helmet of salvation. And did I say that loins girded around with truth, feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? Look at somebody else to take yourself. And tell you, and tell yourself, I've done. God has done it already. I'm making a move. The whole armor is mine. I'm making a move. I've got the Holy Spirit now. Oh, Jesus, I'm making a move. I'm done making bad choices. I'm making a move. I'm done staying in this corner. I'm making a move. I'm moving out into achieving good things. I'm moving out into accomplishing great things. I'm making a my move. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I have the, pro, the, the authority to loose and to bind in heaven and in earth. I'm making my move. I will not be silent. I will not be kept down anymore. I will not be held down in a, in a corner anymore. I'm making my move. He's released me. He's set me free. He's given me the spirit of Boldness. I'm making my move. Oh God, He's told me that I can come into the throne room. Yes. yes. Grace yes. and mm. help yes. when I need it. I'm making a my move. I'm not sick anymore because by his stripes I, I am healed. healed. Yes. I'm making a my move. Are you hearing me this afternoon? Amen. 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 I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. When he told me he was Jaira, he said, make your move. When he told me he was Rafa, uh, he said, make your move. When he told me he was Nisi, he was saying, make your move. When he told me I am Shama, when he said, I'm there with you, good God Almighty, he was saying, yeah. I will never leave you. No, I will never you. forsake mm -hmm. you. He's saying, make a move. I came into your situation. I sat on your well so that you realize you are to go out and talk to people. I talk to men and talk to women and, and go do things and leave the pots behind and leave yes. the earthly things behind and make your move. move. I'm Amen. done. Amen. I'm done. Lord help me. I'm done. But here's, here's what I need you to realize. Everything uh, that God does uh, begins with a move. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, if God is going to do anything in your life, uh, it always starts with a move. Uh, that's why we say there was a great move uh, of God. Uh, because it always starts uh, with a move. Uh, the Bible tells me uh, in the Acts, Acts 8, uh, Acts 1 uh, and verse 8, uh, that you will uh, receive power when the Holy Spirit, Spirit. does what? Comes on you, you and you will be my witnesses yes. where God uh, in Jerusalem, uh, yes. where Lord uh, in Judea, where Lord uh, and in Samaria. I'll see yes. you all later. And then he says, uh, and it's gonna go to the uttermost parts uh, of the world. Uh, now then, Acts 1 chapter 8 tells me uh, that the, the message, uh, that the gospel, that we ought to be witnesses uh, in a place called uh, Samaria, along with Jerusalem, Judea, and uh, the rest of the world. Uh, but it has to come through Samaria. That is Acts 1 uh, 
and verse 8. But Acts 8 and verse 1 tells me that Saul was approving of their killing on that day of Stephen. On the day a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. Now they're in Jerusalem, but persecution came. Persecution came, and the apostles, everyone except the apostles, were scattered through Judea and Samaria. I'll see you all later. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. Whenever yeah. God gets ready to do a move, he always starts with a great move. And the Bible tells me that in Acts 8, chapter 14, that the apostles in Jerusalem heard uh, that after the persecution, after the woman went out uh, and she started to say, come see a man. After the persecution uh, and the apostles, everybody except the apostles were spread in Samaria, uh, that uh, Samaria had accepted uh, the word of God. You're not hearing Amen. what I'm saying. Amen. Yes. yes. Sister Elsa, what happened uh, is that God was about to do a move in Samaria and in order to start a move, he says, I need to get in there myself first. So Jesus says, I'm visiting Samaria and I'm starting with one woman. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Yes. I don't know her name is, uh, but it is a woman at the well. Uh, I don't know where she came from, uh, but she went out into the town uh, and she started to tell people that there is a man uh, named Jesus. Uh, fast forward now, uh, and the Bible says here is a great move of God uh, where Samaria accepts the word of God, so much so that Peter, James, uh, that uh, uh, Peter and John uh, were sent into Samaria because God is moving. Can I tell you something this afternoon? And I'm almost done. I'm done. Really? When God makes a move, when God says make your move, it is not that God just wants you to start something. God is about to do something great in your life. You all not hearing yeah. what I'm saying. When God comes into your life and God moves first, it is because God wants a great a move to break out. You are not hearing what I'm saying yes. to you. God wants a breakout in your home. He wants a breakout on your job. He wants a breakout in the community. He wants a breakout in the vicinity. God wants great things to break out in the family. You are not hearing what I'm saying to you. Yeah. But God says, if I make a move and you make a move, there's going to be a great move of God. Yes. yes. I'm done. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The gospel Amen. came to you and me. It had to go through Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Before the gospel got into the rest of the world, Samaria was a stop on the map. Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be a great move. Yeah. First, move made his move. He removed certain things. And here is a breakout in Acts, in the book of Acts. And what I'm telling you right now is you might not see it. You might not know how it's going to work out. You might not understand it fully. But when God makes a move, God says, you make a move. Praise God. You expect mm -hmm. great things to happen in your life. I'm done here. I'm done here. <clears throat> But I just want to amen. leave. You gotta put God first in everything. Amen. Yes, mm -hmm. amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. First. He moved first for us. He moved first for you. He moved first for me. Praise the name of the Lord. He put everything aside. He left heaven. He left the splendor. He left everything. And he said, I need to schedule this in. I need to go to Calvary for them so that they can have eternal life. The greatest move that God did was when he came to earth and he died for us. Praise God. God first in my day. God first in my life. God first in the marriage. God first in the job. God first with the kids. God first with the choices, the university choice, the job choice, the city choice. Whether mm -hmm. I'm staying here or going back, God first. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this afternoon? Amen. Amen. Every decision and every choice, God First, God first in the money. Praise God. God first in the finances. Amen. Put God first. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you this afternoon, saints. 
Uh, I trust that you are blessed by the word of God. If you're there and you don't know the Lord, if you're hearing this message <clears throat> and you haven't accepted Amen. Him as your Savior, I want to invite you, praise God, in this moment, in this sanctified moment. I know we're, we're going to have Brother Chris in a moment, but I just want to invite you, if you haven't accepted the Lord, to pray with me. I want to pray with you. Praise Pray simply to accept the Lord in your life. All you have to do is just open your heart. The best decision, the easiest decision you will realize that you will ever make. Praise God. I don't know who it is. I don't know if you're hearing me through somebody else, but or maybe later you're hearing me. But I want you to just say, God, Lord Jesus, I come before you right now. Yes. Lord, just as I am. Just yes. as I am, Lord. You know me. You know everything about me. My history, past. You know my decisions. You know my failures, my insecurities. You know my so-called disabilities, the things that I struggle with. Maybe nobody knows them. You know everything, God. You see them. And I just bring my whole self to you right now. All of it. Yes. The house, no hidden room. The basement, the back room, the storeroom, the closet. Ah, I bring everything to you, Lord God, and I ask you to save my soul. Save my soul. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me, God. Make me new. Make me whole. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes. Make heaven my home. Make eternal life mine, Lord. Yes. You, my life, Jesus, from now and the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, listen.